Greetings, and Jonathan here from the Ultimate Diamond Information site, goodoldgold.com. And let's say you are a consumer shopping for a cushion cut diamond on the internet today, or in the bricks and mortar store, either way. And you come on the internet and you come onto a website like pricescope.com. Okay. And we're going to enter some search criteria. I'm going to look for, be looking for searching for cushion cuts between 1.53 in the carat weight to 1.59. And let's say we're going to look for a specific color clarity range. Let's say H color and VS2 clarities. And boom, here we pull up 21 options from a variety of different vendors offering carat and a half HVS2 cushion cuts online. And here we have prices ranging as low as 6700 Got some in the mid 8 k some in the mid 7 k range. And here's one up to oh, a little over $10,000 in price. Now, with over a $3,000 price difference on cushion cut diamonds that are all in the carat and a half range HVS2 you know is the guy who's charging 10 grand uh, ripping people off and the guy who's charging 6700 just giving the deal of the century or is that 10k stone really the most beautiful or is that 6700 dollar one have serious issues that we just don't see online uh, if you want to find out some of the answers to these questions you're gonna love this video uh, and I just want you to stick with me as we take a tour, my personal tour, on a consumer's guide to cushion cut diamonds. Greetings and welcome to this episode of Rhino's School of Rock. And in this episode, we are going to be covering a consumer's guide to buying cushion cuts. All right, whether you're doing it on the internet or in a local bricks and mortar store, uh, we want to kind of um, clear the smoke here and make, uh, make this as, as easy as a decision as possible for you guys who are watching and you ladies who are trying to decide what kind of a cushion cut do you like best. All right, so we're gonna um, hop in. Uh, first of all, let's just define what a cushion cut is. All right, a cushion cut, very simply, is a diamond that is a uh, four-sided diamond with rounded corners that takes on the appearance of a cushion or a pillow, okay? And cushion cut diamonds can come in um, square or squarish varieties and they can also come rectangular. Uh, although probably the most popular on the market at this time are cushions that fall in the square shaped category. But any diamond that has the outline of a cushion or a pillow, which that four sided with the rounded corners would be considered a cushion shape if it was sent to a uh, gem laboratory to be, uh, to be graded, would be described as some kind of a cushion cut. Um, and really, that's the only qualification for, uh, for what determines whether a diamond is a cushion or not. To the consumer who is investigating or researching the subject of cushion cuts, you will undoubtedly um, be looking at lab reports of cushion cuts. And on lab reports, such as GIA uh, lab reports, you will see cushions broken down into generally one of two categories. Um, GIA will describe a cushion cut diamond either as a cushion brilliant cut all right, and here on the screen you see an example of that, or a cushion modified brilliant. And GIA will give this, there's a variety of different um, facet plots, which are basically boilerplate drawings of facet designs um, that you can get within cushion. But um, the thing is, on a GIA report, when you see these two different um, 
descriptions, either Cushion Brilliant or Cushion Modified Brilliant, uh, we often get the question, well, what is what is going to be the, the difference that I can see between a Cushion and a Cushion Modified? And the answer to that is it's impossible to tell how beautiful or how not beautiful the diamond is based on the plot on a GIA report. Uh, when it comes to uh, lab reports, you will also see things graded. You know, you'll get your general information like the carat weight of the diamond, the clarity, the color. That's useful information, of course. All right. So GIA will look at the um, polish and symmetry. They'll give a basic facet diagram of the cushion cut. And they'll even give a total depth measurement and a table measurement of the cushion cut. And, um, and while this may seem like a, a decent amount of information on the cut of the diamond, uh, this is really uh, poor, a poor amount of information to give on the diamond, especially you know if we're going to be making a buying decision involving thousands of dollars of our capital, uh, or you are consulting us with regards to a cushion brilliant, um, or, or cushion cut diamond, this information is insufficient as we're going to look more closely. Okay, so once we've looked at the information given on the GIA report um, with regards to polish, symmetry, uh, and depth and table, I mean, okay, we do got some basic information there. Um, the next step in selecting a cushion cut is determining which facet structure appeals most to your eyes. Okay, and cushion cut diamonds can generally be broken down into one of two categories when it comes to facet structure. <clears throat> and that is either a modern facet structure or a vintage or antique styled facet structure. Um, by far the most popular and the most common cushion cuts on the market have this modern facet structured design. And as I'm talking to you now, we have modern facet structured cushions appearing on the screen to you here. Um, you'll notice different facet structures, even to these modern. So, so modern facet structured cushions do come in a variety of different cutting designs. There's, I mean, there is literally a world of different cutting designs out there with modern faceted cushions. <clears throat> Okay, so now that you've seen some of these graphics of modern faceted cushions, uh, let's contrast these with your antique or your vintage faceted cushions. Okay, and, and you'll notice now in these antique and vintage faceted cushions, these have a broad, wide um, facet structure to them. Okay, these are cut in such a way that they're mimicking the old style cushions that generally follow, um, that were cut you know, in, uh, in back in the old days, these, these were, a lot of them are antiques. Just about all of them that you see on the market are antiques, although there are uh, maybe a handful of cutting facilities that are cutting these vintage, fa vintage, vintage faceted cushions. Um, they are definitely harder to find on the market. I'd say for every hundred cushions that are cut, you know, maybe five or ten would, would fall into that realm of the vintage facet structure. Okay. So, step number two, which facet structure appeals most to your eyes? That's the second thing that we want to know. And while we're on the subject of facet structure, I would like to point out that the best way to see the real facet design of a cushion, uh, the, you know, the GIA report is helpful, but not conclusive. Photography is the best way. In internet photography, one of the best uses for general internet photography when it comes to cushion cut diamonds is seeing the facet structure. Okay? And, um, you know, just like you saw in the modern faceted cushions, they have that more splintery kind of an appearance to it, whereas the vintage faceted cushions have that broad, wide, chunky faceted appearance to it. Okay, so internet photography is good. Um, for determining facet structure when we're looking at cushion cut diamonds. Okay, so step number one was ascertain the information from the GIA report. Step number two, um, determine what facet structure appeals most to your eyes. And now we move on to step number three, 
which is the trickiest step to take in this process. Um, when you're buying a cushion cut, uh, whether it's in a store or even and especially over the internet, because ascertaining light performance in a cushion cut um, is a matter of being familiar with the optical properties that are seen in the rarest cushion cuts, all right? So when we're talking about light performance in a cushion cut, we're generally talking about assessing the optical characteristics of brightness, okay? observing how many bright reflections are coming out of the diamond, particularly when we're looking at it in a diffused lighting environment, um, which you generally are not gonna find in a jewelry store. Um, when we are in that diffused lighting environment, not only will we see the amount of bright reflections from within the diamond, but we're also going to be observing what GIA would call patterned scintillation. And very simply put, the pattern is a pattern of lights and darks. Is there a nice distribution to the contrast pattern of the diamond as we observe it in diffused lighting? Or are there too many dark areas or too many um, grayish areas in the stone? Okay, this is an important optical characteristic to ascertain in a cushion cut because brightness and pattern scintillation are the most popular optical characteristics that your fiance will see on a daily basis, especially if she works in an office environment where she's under diffused fluorescent lighting most of the time. The other two optical characteristics that we're gonna ascertain in a cushion cut is fire and sparkle scintillation, okay? When you take diamonds away from diffuse lighting and bring them into spot lighting, that's where you're gonna see fire and sparkle scintillation. But we're gonna show these things to you. We're gonna get you intimately familiar with what some of the rarest cushion cuts in the world look like versus what is commonly being sold out there. So when you get done watching this video, you will have no excuses, okay? Um, just to kind of, uh, before we get to looking uh, intently at the diamond, I just want to say some things. There are different tools on the market for ascertaining light performance or giving us a good idea of the light performance in a cushion cut. One of those tools is not a sarin report. Okay, you'll see on the internet and on certain websites. Um, reports that will give you all uh, give you facet measurements basic facet measurements of the diamond that you're considering which will include more information than what's typically on a GIA report and those reports would be called sarin reports they tell you crown angles and pavilion angles here's an example of a sarin report on a cushion cut diamond and you can see there's a lot more numerical data on a sarin report than there is on a GIA report the GIA only gives you table and total depth. Sarin gives you all kinds of angles, and depending upon how sophisticated of a sarin machine you have, you can really see all the facet angles. But here's the thing. <laughs> Unless you know personally how all those angles correlate to visual observation, these numbers are useless, okay? So when it comes to ascertaining light performance in a cushion, you know, um, I see published on the internet uh, often, you know, what are, what are the ideal proportions for a cushion cut? Well, you know, unless you've studied cushion cuts intently and have visually observed the optical, the optical characteristics on different proportion sets, uh, most people cannot answer that question intelligently. So I would suggest, uh, you know, stay away from something. If you don't understand it, and you don't have the money to learn how to understand it, stay away from it, okay? Because proportions and, and uh, numbers can really be misleading and you could just drive yourself crazy uh, trying to learn what sets of numbers are gonna produce what type of appearances. So when it comes to ascertaining light performance in cushion cut diamonds particularly, there are two tools that we utilize uh, which give extremely helpful and objective data when we're looking at the optics of a cushion cut. Um, this first technology is called Diamex Ray. The second one is called ASET. And these two optical technologies show me independently how the facets on the bottom of the diamond are functioning 
and also how the facets on the top of the diamond are functioning. And the best way to familiarize you with these two technologies is to show you some live examples of diamonds here that I happen to have here as I'm doing this shoot and how they correlate to visual observation. So I'm going to shrink down on your screen here for a moment. And here we have on the screen two diamonds. Uh, here you can see their diam X-ray images and their A-set images popping up on the screen. And right now we're looking at the brightness of the two diamonds in diffuse lighting. We're looking at brightness and pattern scintillation. Now, something I'd like to point out the two diamonds in this video are both modern faceted cushion cuts, okay? And you're going to see here in the diamond on your left, look at the diam x-ray image of that. You notice there's a lot, there's some reds, there's some reds going on in that, um, but very little reds and a lot of white. All that white that you see in the diam x-ray image is light leakage and all the red that you see in the other um, diam x-ray image are facets on the bottom of the diamond reflecting back light that's that's entering into it okay now the a set imagery that you see of each diamond is showing me um, where the crown of the diamond is drawing its reflections from and the crown of the diamond is either going to draw its reflections off of the horizon Okay. or very specifically a 0 to 45 degree angular spectrum. Okay, Now light entering off of the horizon is uh, where your weakest sources of illumination exist. So when I put a diamond in the A set and I see too much green it throws up a, um, a red flag. The pinks that you see in an A set image that would be indicative of light entering from a 45 to 75 degree angular spectrum. That's where most bright sources of illumination exist. And look at how the brighter diamond has more reds in the A set. You see that? Okay, and look at the A set image of the pooper. <laughs> that diamond has predominantly more greens in it. Exactly. So. Uh, the blues in an A set are indicative of head body shadow. So, right here is a great example of the adverse optical effects that are seen in cushion cut diamonds that leak too much light. And these cushions are in abundance on the marketplace. There's lots and lots of cushions that leak a lot of light. And when cushion cuts leak a lot of light, they have um, what I typically refer to as the crushed ice appearance. All right. So now that you've seen that comparison in, in brightness and, uh, and contrast between the two, here are the two um, as we look at them in spotlighting and we're examining fire and sparkle scintillation. Okay, now you're going to get little tiny sparkles out of the diamond with all that light leakage. There's, it's not a total disaster. So there are some little sparkles going on. But look at the fire coming out of the other diamond. Right. Definitely way superior and a hundred times more beautiful diamond. If I showed this to you live in the store, the assessment is exactly the same that you're seeing here uh, on the screen. Quite frankly, we really like our, um, our video technologies when it comes to showing visual differences in diamonds. All right. Now, now that you've seen the difference in brightness and contrast and fire and sparkle in two modern faceted cushion cuts, I want to point out that this crushed ice appearance is not exclusive to modern faceted cushion cuts. Okay, right now we have on the screen here a modern faceted cushion and a chunky or a vintage faceted cushion. And even the vintage faceted cushion has that crushed ice appearance. Okay, and what, the reason why? Take a look at its um, diam x ray and a set imagery. Okay, again, you got too much light leakage happening under the table facet. So when a cushion cut diamond leaks a lot of light, um, it gives the diamond this glassy, watery, uh, crushed ice kind of an appearance to it that, you know, quite honestly, I don't find very appealing. And most consumers that we show it to also don't find it very appealing. All right. So. 
Bottom line, modern facet structured cushions, if they're not proportioned correctly, their optics are going to be disastrous. Okay, and uh, while we're on this subject of light performance and modern faceted cushions, um, this would be an excellent time to introduce you to a modern faceted cushion cut that we feature. It is a proprietary brand um, that is a square cushion hearts and arrows diamond. I mentioned this briefly as we were talking about facet structure. Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> okay, but let me tell you this. It's a modern facet structured cushion. Um, eight pavilion mains on the bottom. This cushion cut now that you're looking at um, is probably the most precision cut cushion uh, that you'll see on the marketplace when it comes to modern faceted structured cushions. This cushion cut mimics the optics of the rarest round brilliant cut diamonds, the hearts and arrows rounds diamonds. Okay, so um, you know if, if uh, in the world of modern faceted cushion cuts just to show you brightness and contrast that that's what we've been looking at so far between the square cushion hearts and arrows and a common cushion cut okay as you can see that is absolutely no contest um, here now is a square cushion hearts and arrows alongside of a modern faceted cushion cut a traditional cushion cut um, that does have excellent light performance at least amongst the best that we're able to find so this comparison here isn't necessarily here's the pretty diamond, here's the ugly diamond, like it was earlier, um, but a square cushion hearts and arrows, precision optics, um, precision cut, and always top of the line optics. The square cushion hearts and arrows diamond um, probably looks most similar to the Tiffany Nova that's out there. Okay, in fact, this may be cut, uh, be cut even more precise and have better light performance. We've never tested the Tiffany Novo before. But in any case, um, here's that comparison for you. And then there's your comparison in fire and sparkle between those two. So when it comes to the modern facet structure and light performance, um, we're gonna, you know, if you're doing business with us, we're gonna find you the best that's out there. It's that simple, okay? You know, we, we will try, of course, uh, we, we will try and steer you into a square cushion hearts and arrows because the light performance in those is predictable. We know they're gonna be beautiful every time. Um, they're not the cheapest, but then neither are the nicest cut modern faceted cushions either, although they are cheaper than a square cushion hearts and arrows. <laughs> All right. Okay, now we're gonna focus on the vintage um, facet structure uh, and, and the different types of light performance we see in those. And um, we're gonna, I'm just gonna take this opportunity to show you some different varieties. First of all, here is a common vintage facet structured cushion. You're gonna notice, look at it, it has, look at the Diam X-ray image and the A-set. And again, it's got that crushed ice. I told you that it's got that crushed ice kind of appearance. We've seen this one alongside of it. Now I'm going to take this moment to plug our August vintage cushions. This is a chunky faceted cushion that we designed from the ground up to not only have the wide facets, but to have the big flash that should accompany wide facets. Okay. So these cushions here on the right, were designed from the ground up to purposely give you broad, chunky flashes. All right, and those are our, our August vintage cushions. They are like square cushion hearts and arrows, but they're not a modern facet structure. They're a vintage or chunky facet structure. And as you're looking at the Diam X-ray and the A-set imagery of that, you're gonna see two, uh, two worlds of difference in that um, comparison. Now, this next um, vintage faceted cushion we're going to look at, take a look at the Diam X-ray and A-set image of that, okay? And look at on the A-set, that big blue band going right across the table and the light leakage that exists at the top of that diamond. So, you know, wherever you have too much light leakage, remember, you're going to get that crushed ice, that glassy looking appearance. And look at the top of that diamond 
has that kind of watered down glassy look to it but look across the belly of the diamond okay here's a this is a great example of how you're going to get two adverse optical effects in the same diamond because that diamond you could see that over darkness right in the belly of the diamond that's like the um the bow tie in a marquee cut diamond or in a pear shape that's that is too much head and body shadow reflecting in the diamond all right so there you're seeing a very plain um that that diamond i just it doesn't excite me in any way <laughs> especially compared to the diamond you're looking at on the right all right so the two types of adverse optical effects that you could see in a diamond and this would go with any diamond is if it has too much light leakage it's going to take on that glassy watery appearance um, and that's due to light leakage and if there's too much head and body shadow reflecting in a diamond you're going to get an over darkness in those areas of the diamond that are reflecting back too much head and body shadow okay that's a good learning diamond uh, to see for this tutorial okay this next diamond that we're going to look at in the comparison as we're looking at vintage faceted cushions um, take a look now this this diamond has good light return um, and and it's a set imagery drawing in bright reflections from above but notice the leakage that's happening in the corners of that diamond and the greens in the a set of that particular diamond yeah and look at the visual differences from the two stones notice that in that cushion that's on your left right now in this um, third example of vintage faceted cushions that light leakage in the corner extraneous leakage is making the diamond dull in those areas and you know what a pity a 190 1.9 something GVS one diamond that you know I <laughs> would have loved to cut differently but in any case uh, now that you've seen the ASET imagery, the diamond X-ray imagery, and how that correlates to visual observation, uh, this is the most important lesson you're going to get on cushion cuts, especially if you're after those with the most beautiful optics, the most beautiful cushion cut diamonds. And remember, if you're looking for cheap, you're going to get cheap. <laughs> the, the, the primary way of thinking when they're cutting a cushion cut diamond out there in the, in the world of diamond cutting how can I get the heaviest diamond possible from the rough when they mine a piece of rough from the earth they're looking to get the heaviest diamond possible they'll do it but it happens at the expense of optics those cutting facilities that are cutting cushion cuts for the best and most beautiful optics possible they'll keep cutting away that rough until they get the perfect sets of angles and proportions those cost more obviously because they're cutting away weight as opposed to saving weight and making the diamond uglier so I hope this uh, tutorial has helped you better understand uh, cushion cuts and the optical properties um, just to recap everything that we talked about step number one we want to look at the GIA report GIA is great for the carat weight the clarity the color the polish the symmetry um, and a table and a total depth measurement you know and looking how thin and thick the girdle are and stuff that that's all good information to have we want to walk in with that information but then we want to go to step number two we want to determine the facet structure that appeals most to our eyes do you like a more splintery um, appearance with um, with an emphasis on more smaller flashes of light or do you like the old vintage faceted cushions that give off those big broad chunky flashes of light all right you got to decide where you're falling at then once you've determined what facet structure you like best then it's a matter of finding a diamond within that facet structure that has the best optical properties all right and if you can get um, diamond x-ray imagery or uh, ideal scope imagery and also equally as important a set imagery um, would probably place a heavier emphasis on the a set imagery uh, over ideal scope imagery as it's showing us more critical data but um, you know that stuff this, this is all kinds of information you want to walk into your decision with and then if we're serving you I mean we're gonna visually show you the optical characteristics of brightness 
pattern scintillation, fire and sparkle scintillation um, of any particular cushion cut that you're getting from us. Okay, and before we close out this video, I wanted to show you um, modern faceted cushions cut for light performance that we can generally get. The, the traditional one, that's a hard to find stone, but we're able to you'd find these. These are the needles in the haystack of modern faceted cushions, a square cushion hearts and arrows, and one of our august vintage um, uh, chunky faceted cushions side by side in a number of lighting environments to show you what we know are among the most beautiful cushion cuts you'll see in a number of lighting environments that will help you ascertain um, what it is that you enjoy most in the type of cushion that you want to get. Once again, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned and join us for our, our other programs.